Welcome and thank you for listening to our Sunday broadcast. Join us as we receive from the incorruptible seed of the Word of God today from Pastor Robert Jackson of Word of Faith Worship Center in Concord, North Carolina. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we ask for your word today. Holy Spirit, flow with us. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us. We ask for your guidance today, Lord Jesus, and pray that the word, Father, touches the hearts of the people, heals the people, delivers the people. Thank you, God. Praise you, Father. given us all life it's all you've given us all something to live for Lord we've seen such miracles we've seen and tasted your glory and Father I pray that that just overflow out of us into the people that need it Lord Jesus send people in our path Lord God that we can speak the word to them with boldness, with that boastful hallelujah, Lord. Let us not be ashamed because, God, you weren't ashamed of us. Thank you, Jesus. We lift you up and praise you, Father, and thank you so much for this day. Hallelujah, and in the name of Jesus, we lift you up and pray. Amen. That's why we're uh, about to uh, do tithes and offering and everything. Why you getting tithes and offering uh, ready? Uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, uh, Darius uh, for reward. Darius, come forward. He received the award uh, at his job. They gave him an award on the 18th of this month. And with the award, it's... Uh, the Sunshine Award, uh, and well, he uh, goes out and yes, make uh, pretty much yes, make people day and everything. He's uh, uh, employed that lift up peoples uh, and, and help make their day. The Sunshine Award for Lowe's uh, Home Improvement. So we just want to congratulate him on that. Amen. Now we're at the part of the service where everybody can comp- uh, participate. Absolutely, come f- uh, Judy, come for ties and offering. Oh, what a wonderful praise and worship that was! The blood of Christ speaks a better word. Hallelujah! That leads us right into this part of our service: uh, the collecting of the offering. Uh, I'm going to be reading from Mark chapter 12 starting with verse 41 and in this chapter we see Jesus in the temple teaching and he takes time out from that to watch people put their offerings into the temple treasury verse 41 says and Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much and there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites 
which made a farthing. And to put it in today's vernacular, that was less than a penny. And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow has cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. Her two little bitty copper coins in God's sight, in Jesus' sight, was more than all of the wealth that the, the rich people put in. In verse 44, For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. She cast in all she had. Now, what does that say to us today? That was a sacrificial giving on her part. And I'm not saying you have to open your wallet and give everything you have every time the, the plate is passed. That's not what I'm saying. But there should come times when we have that sacrificial giving, when we, we might want to pass up something that we want or desire to give to the Lord. So I'll let that be between you and God today. I just thank God for this time in the service that we can give back to him. Let's pray. Father God, we give you praise, Father, as we've already praised your name, Lord. We lift up your name and we praise you, Father God. We know that you give us all things. Every good and perfect gift comes from you, Father. And this is a time where we can give back to you, Lord. And I pray that you use our tithes and offerings to further your kingdom. And we thank you for it, Lord. And bless every person here in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Well, saints of God, there was a song that fell on my mind earlier today. And this song, most of y'all might know this, is based out of the first two verses of Psalms chapter 25, and the name of it is called Unto Thee, O Lord. So um, I thought maybe I'd like to share that song with y'all. It goes like this. Unto Thee, O Lord, unto Thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my soul unto thee, O Lord? Do I lift up my soul? Oh my God, oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Come on, everybody. Unto thee, O Lord, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, to thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. 
Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Come on, clap your hands. Give God a hand clap of praise. And now I will introduce you to the speaker of the day. Hallelujah. He is capable to preach the gospel in any kind of way. Introducing this man of God who's bringing the word today, none other than my very own dad. I like for you, or the pastor, he, I'm sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, but introducing this man of God, none other than the pastor, I'd like for y'all to stand up on your feet, give a hand clap of praise for Pastor Jackson. Thank you, Derek. Good song. Tell you what, it's a special day, but you can be seated. We've got a special more things. Uh, my pastor is going to say a few words, and I think Brother Wayne has a song he wants to bless us with. Story. Now, this is, just, this is very brief, and I could have kept this, but it just came to my mind. Every one of them worship songs we sang was really good. I noticed on the credits there was a four to a half a dozen people had their names on writing that little old song. A couple of them, I noticed a well-known pastor's name down there. He might have just... They got agreed to get in on the credits, I don't know. But but then um, those, were, those were wonderful. And then we sang one little thing there that was written thousands of years ago by a young fellow by the name of David. And it's been in our King James songbook all these years, and it beats all the new stuff, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm not putting none of that stuff down. I'm just, I miss saying that's some good stuff in that Bible. Worship you. 
I can only imagine and only imagine surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel when I dance for you Jesus or in all of you be still will I stand in your presence but to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine, oh, I can only imagine, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel when I dance for you, Jesus, or in all Or to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I able to speak it all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, yes, I can only imagine. I don't want you not to only to imagine. I want you to know it's happening in heaven. Every day, people are dancing with Jesus. And today I want to dedicate uh, this service to my mom. 84 years, she's waited to dance with Jesus. 84 years. She widowed, she never remarried again, but she took Jesus as her husband and honored her family, loved her family, loved her kids. And I brought a special flower bouquet this morning. There was a nice big, we had a lot of flowers, and I think everybody who gave flowers to mom, we, we set them there in the living room. They covered her whole kitchen counter. That she usually covered with food that for many days was covered with food for all the uh, people blessing us. But this flower was given to Ruthie at Limestone. Uh, mom never actually wrote this on her want list, but she wanted to see uh, Ruthie play at limestone but she never saw it in her body but she's watching she will watch from the grandstands of heaven and she will never miss a game she will never miss a church service again and those flowers were given by her students so today that's in memorial of her and her beautiful beautiful picture that I'll always remember amen yeah. But also a special thanks to, to Wayne. That was a selection that we played at Southside Baptist Church. And I'm not going to talk a lot about the twos that God has done in my life over the years, but Mom got a lot, a lot of things. This is uh, the year of the double. And she's got a lot of doubles this year. Uh, she's getting two funeral services, two homecomings, one at uh, Southside Baptist Church and one at World of Faith Worship Center in Concord. Mama's going to help me take this gospel to the world. And today I'm just bringing a little bit apart. I got her Bible this morning with me. Uh, you know, when we get ready, we come to that place in our time where we know our departure's getting close at hand. We write down our last will and testament. And I didn't have to read this will to know that this Bible was for me. I was putting it together and grabbed it while Mom was still in the bedroom, getting, getting prepared for glory. But the Lord was getting me prepared for her story. And you can only do that in God's presence. I've tried, Jim, I've tried to maybe put some uh, messages beforehand for people I know that I'm going to be giving their homecoming. I just can't do it. You know why? Because it's not the right timing. As long as there's breath in your body, you need to focus on living. Amen? <laughs> Don't focus on the homecoming until it's, it's time. 
And I've learned that, and I thank God for his special anointing. But as, as I said in Mama's MJ's lift chair that we, as a church, we were able to provide for her that helped her for the last three years get up, out of, get up and carry and fight that good fight of faith, I sat there, and I said, I need to go get Mom's Bible. It's right there on the front door with her. She's got candy. It's in her little pocketbook. It's got butterscotch and peppermint and all of her good little things she carries to church. And I opened it up, and I sat down in that easy chair. I call it the easy chair. To Mom, it, <laughs> she's lifted, but to me it was an easy chair for me that day. But I just sat down, and I opened up this Bible, and the first page I saw was just, you know, it was presented to her by my sisters. And then the third page I got to, it was just something that just said, To Robert. So it just touched my heart that Mama knew the value that was in this Word, and she knew how much I loved to preach God's Word, and she made sure that she made sure I saw that. God made sure I saw that. And uh, so I said, Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Jesus. So today I want to I share with you, I think I did a message on uh, heaven maybe a few years ago, and I thought about maybe pulling up that sermon and re-preaching it. But I didn't have to. As we're going through the closure and things this week, I just got my little iPad, my iPhone, and made little notes. And then I just put them down to pages. Because God will give you what you need when you need it. and He'll give you the strength. Um, so to title this today, I would say part two, but it's Destination Heaven. Destination Heaven. And I want if, if you'll turn with me in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, we're going to read this whole chapter, but we're going to not hit on too many highlights in it. But this is Paul. You know, Paul wrote two-thirds of this gospel, which is the good news we get to read today here in 2020. But Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints, and I'm speaking to some saints here today and to the world, at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Double peace to you. <laughs> Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, past tense, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in where? Heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Destination heaven. According as he hath forgiven all of our sins, according to the riches of whose grace? His grace wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. According to his good pleasure, God is a good God, which he hath purposed in himself, that in a dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. Verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first, what? Trusted. Unto thee, Lord, we trust. We put our trust. Trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word, that good word, that we sung this morning, the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest, that means that's the guarantee. You put your faith in Jesus, I guarantee your destination is heaven. <laughs> Nobody will argue that. If they argue that, you just say, I know in whom I believe. I don't know who you believe in, but I know Jesus and I'm going to heaven. No ifs, ands, or buts, I believe Darius would say. Verse 15, Wherefore also, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and he's talking to the Ephesians here, and love unto the saints, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Mama made mention of many people in her prayers down here on the earth. Mama's destination is heaven. Those prayers are going to be worked out. Amen. Mama's prayers. I believe it's the songs, Mama's prayers. <clears throat> Verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. I want you to know Jesus today. I want you to hear Jesus today. And you can. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. 
And what is the riches of the glory of his, of his inheritance that's in Wayne, it's in Tammy, it's in the saints. He has left us an eternal inheritance. Jesus Christ, the living, the Son of God. Verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? He gives us his power to believe according to the working of his mighty power. It's not what you do. It's what he done. Amen. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head. Jesus is the head of this church over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all and all. Can you say amen to the reading of the word? Amen. I love what my pastor says. You need to read this word, and then you, let, you need to let the word read you. Amen. amen. Destination heaven. So where do, I, where do I purchase my tickets for this great destination? These tickets for this departure. I want to remind you where we just read Ephesians 1, chapter, verses 13. Chapter 1, verses 13. Where do you get these tickets? How do you purchase them? Paul said, In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of the truth, God's truth, His word, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Jesus holds your ticket. Now, I say ticket because you have to make it personal to you. He doesn't hold everybody's ticket personally. He holds that ticket for you. There's a good old song that says he's got the whole world in his hands, but you've got to come to that hand. Those nail-pierced hands, were, 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 that sacrifice were for, was for you personally. Jesus holds our tickets. It's purchased with his blood, sealed by the Holy Spirit, Nothing else to be done. There's no other work other than the work of Calvary that has made your destination sure, heaven. And you don't have to wait at heaven's gate. Hey, you can even ask for a fast pass. There's no lines. You don't have to wait. Ever been to Disney World? Have to wait in line to get on a ride to depart out of that Whatever ride you own to the end of it, there's always going to be a beginning, there's going to be an end. But if you pre purchase your tickets, you can go, they call it a fast pass. Well, Jesus has a fast pass. 2 Corinthians 6 2 says, Today is the day of salvation. You ain't got to wait in line. You need to make sure your destination is heaven because Jesus has you on his mind. He has the whole world on his mind. He is love. He loves the whole world, but not everybody is in the family. He created us all, but we all have to come to a place in our life where we say, I'm, I, I'm not there, but Jesus is. And he gave us the Holy Spirit, who is his ministry is to show us the love of the Father, is to draw us and woo us in our busy times and even in our quiet times. When it's still, God is speaking. And he's saying, the old song, come home, come home. All ye that are weary, come home. If you're weary, you're not home. Because Jesus said, my burden is light. My, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's not a struggle to go to heaven. It's a struggle to stay down here without Christ. Give up that struggle and go to Jesus. He's been calling ever since he landed. He, he was born in this earth. And the angels rejoiced. Mom was rejoicing with the angels. Serenaded by angels. Why? She had this testimony. I believe God, and I believe in Jesus also. She believed this story. I want to tell you a little story that will minister to you. As a, as a boy, probably in the first, second grade, we lived in an uh, area called Sundown. Back then, it was dirt road, and it's all houses now, but it was cows and pasture land back then. You rode, a school, you rode, rode the school bus home on a dirt road, and then you, I had to walk probably about three-quarters of a mile from a bus stop to get home. So I knew the land. I knew the territory. Back then, you could leave your windows open, the screen doors open. Why? 
because you just trusted your neighbor. You loved your neighbor. We still do. Christians, we still do. Amen? And it's going to turn around. God's going to turn some things around, but it starts with the church. This is where it all starts. But I can remember I had, I, I knew, I played outside. I went swimming in the lake by myself sometimes. Mama didn't know. She would have whooped my butt if she found out. She can't reach me now yet. But I tell you what, I knew my surroundings. And my dad, I can't remember the circumstance, but I remember, you know, y'all, y'all know my dad and his, uh, the lifestyle he chose. He chose alcohol and a lot of things over his family, and it had a hold on him. But I can remember it as a young kid riding home with him from somewhere I don't know where we came, but it had to be from somewhere where he was drinking because he was intoxicated. And back then, we had a cul-de-sac, you know, just a circle that led, led home. You could go this way to a shortcut, and you can go around this way and come home. For some reason, he went the long way. Well, back then, we had, to, we had our ditches were gullies. We'd get big rain, they'd wash out. And Dad, he passed out, and he, that truck went right over that ditch, enough to where the truck's sitting there sideways. So me, we didn't have seatbelts on back then. So here I am as a little boy. This is, this is night. It's about 10 o'clock at night. Dark. <laughs> and there I am, Dad. He's passed. I don't know if he's alive. Wayne. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm a kid. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. Daddy, he, he, he's out. So well, I climb out. I had to climb out, up and out the window of the door. They didn't, we didn't have a lot of street lights back then. I'm a little boy, and it's dark, but I know my way home. I said, I know my way home. I had walked this road before. It wasn't in the dark so much because I, I got home before dark. My mama, mama was there. You better be home before dark. You better be home when mama says, Robert Scott. That's my cue. She's looking for me. Mama didn't know. I was with daddy. And I walked about three quarters of a mile in the darkness. And I can remember looking up. You know, you're seeing trees that look like mountains. Darkness. But I knew where home was. There's was lights on. And I kept walking. And I got there. I don't remember. I know I just went to somebody and said, hey, daddy, da, 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 da. But I made it home. I made it home. I told Mike Cook. He's the funeral director there in Mooresville. Uh, Kevin's Cook. I told Mike Cook, mom's funeral director, I said, because mom was going to go, we had a visitation that night, and then we would uh, meet, at the, meet at the church for her homecoming at 2 o'clock. <clears throat> but I told Mike Cook, I said, Mike, I said, I want to meet you at the funeral home because I want to ride with mom and Hirsch to Southside Baptist Church Monday at 2. Now, we got there before 2. I mean, we, wasn't late. <laughs> we got there way before 2 because mom would not make this ride alone. I done said it in my heart. Now, I know where mom is. I know she's in heaven, but her body still has got to be committed to this earth. And I knew there's angels there, and I know Jesus is there, but her little boy was, had already determined, Mom will not ride this ride alone. As the song says, Zach Williams and Dolly Parton gives life to, No, I never walk alone, never walk alone. You're always there in the waiting, in the searching, in the healing, in the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been or where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't even see it, there was Jesus. There was Jesus. Hindsight, guys, is 2020 this year for me. There's two more months left in this year. Can you figure two more months, Wayne? November and December. And I look back now and I know as a small boy during that cold and dark night, Jesus did not let me walk alone. Now, I didn't have a relationship with him that I do today, but I can tell you hindsight's 2020. He walked with me every step of the way. Every step. He was with me because why? He promised. He promised us all in His Word. Pastor read it this morning. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. His rod and His staff, they comfort me. His Word, His Holy Spirit. 
They comfort me. They give me the comfort that I need. There's going to be many days that I'm going to have time and I'm, you know, you're going to think about your mama. You're going to think about people that's gone on before you. But you're not down here walking this walk alone. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. He's your comforter. He's your helper. He's your standby. He's waiting for directions. He's waiting for you to praise God with all you have and bring your healing, bring your manifestation. That was my prayer through this whole process. I said, Lord, whoever comes visiting, if they're sick, Lord, let them walk out healed. If they're lost, Lord, let them be saved. If they're bound, Lord, let them be set free. Because in death, where is death? Where is your sting, O death? Jesus conquered death, hell in the grave. Jesus will not let you walk alone. Now you can choose. You can choose to walk alone. Reject him. Deny that he's there, but he's there. Whether you reject him or accept him, he's going to walk. He's got his Holy Spirit around every one of us. We've got angels around you protecting you. It protected Daniel Robinson here at this church when I wasn't here. Angels were there. Angels were dispatched, watching over this people, watching over this family. Why? Because God said he would. He's faithful. I said, God is faithful. This past week, we said, I love you, and we'll see you soon. To my mom, Margie, Arlene Jackson, and her closest neighbor and our dearest friend, Miss Vivian Louise Pender, my brother's mother-in-law. Within two days, we had to say goodbye to two virtuous Proverbs 31 women. It was hard. But you know who was there? Jesus was there. It was hard for him to hang on that cross, knowing that he could call legions of angels. He could come down, and he could take care of us, but only for a short time in that body. It was hard for him to hang on that cross, but there was something greater that held him there. It was the future. It was our future. It was us sitting here. Because if Jesus had came down, we would be walking alone. But for that great price, he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Your will be done. So after the passing, the letting go of those two virtuous women, I can say without a doubt, Mama, Vivian Louise Pender, both first and foremost knew and loved Jesus Christ. I know it. Why? They showed it. Amen. Faith without works is dead. I don't care what you got to say. Jesus said, show me. Jesus didn't tell people he loved him. Jesus showed people he loved them. By what he did. He healed her sick babies. He helped the poor. He showed us love. That's what love does. That's what love does. Amen. They knew Jesus Christ. And secondly, they loved their families unconditionally. Unconditionally. I don't care if you were the one in the family making the most of the money or you were making a little bit of the money or you might have been the cleanest or you might have been the dirtiest. They loved us all unconditionally. How? They met Jesus. Each one of them in their own time made a decision to follow Christ. And that's the only way you can love your neighbor as yourself as you first have to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then... Jesus will change your want to. Mama made it. You remember our, our you remember Jesse Duplantis, our mama made it to our, one of our, our greatest, biggest events we've done here at the church. Mama made it. And we heard that night, Jesse said, make you a want list. Because what he talked about was, what do you want? What do you want, God? God has provided everything for us. But we, everything we do is voice activated. If you think God uh, takes from you, he steals, kills, and destroys, you're confused. That's what the devil does. He is, the devil is a God, but he's a, a little God of this world. But Jesus defeated him. And he said, I got the keys. I got, Jesus said, I got the keys. And he looked at the church and he said, now I give the keys unto you. Amen. You take authority over the devil. You be blessed. Mama had a want. I got mama to make her. We... we we got Mama to talk about a want list. Mama wanted to see Trey Brawley, one of her uh, younger grandsons, get married. Mama made it to the wedding, got pictures to prove it. Mama made it. She wanted to make it. She made it. She made it, Jim. 
She filled, there's just a few little won't lists she did, but that was one of them. There was one that was not written. She wanted to see Jesus. She didn't have to write it. She didn't have to write all these things to me in this Bible. She put my name on it. She believed in the name of Jesus. And she wanted to see Jesus. And we wanted her to go. I done told Mama, Mama, if I'm not there, don't wait on me. Don't wait to hear my voice. You listen and you look for Jesus. Because He's waiting for you. And when you're ready, because Jesus said Father to the Father, not my will, but your will be done. When Jesus gave His will and on that cross... They could not take our Lord. He gave, he committed his spirit into his Father's hands. Well, on Friday, October the 16th, 2020, at 528, my mama entered heaven's gates. I had my old phone in my pocket. You know, last breath. God breathed into Adam the breath of life, and he received Margie Arlene Burke right into heaven. Breathing in, breathing out. That's, that's, destina that's your destination. That's how easy it is to get there. Now, she struggled in her body. Why? Because the body was weak, but her spirit was alive. And she didn't want to leave all those that were gathered around her because she could see us. Her eyes was closed, but I knew she saw every one of us. And there was a couple more things. That, there was one more son that had to come down and sit down and make a special request by the king. Elvis Preston, now, I'll just share this because Mama needs to know this. Mama knows this. <laughs> you, I need to know this. Elvis Preston, because the Holy Ghost told me this when I was mowing the church lawn up here one day last week. I, the, the days are all just jumbled around. But I was out there thinking about, I was mowing and thinking about, you know, Lord, forgive me for calling Elvis Presley a king. You know, he's the king of rock and roll. He's the king of gospel music. He had a gift from God, amen. He sang and he blessed a lot of people. But the Lord said, whoa, whoa, Jesus Elvis was a king. The Bible says God has made us kings and priests. Jesus made us kings and priests unto God. I said, Lord, you're right. He was a king unto God, but he's not the king of kings. That belongs to one only. That's Jesus. And mom loved Elvis, and she got all her requests. And I, that goes back. I, I forgot some of the want list. Mama had her want list. Everything she wanted in those arrangements, she got. Southside had just opened. That was their first Sunday, Wayne, of opening up Sunday service. Mama was there Monday, the, the day after. The church was open, and we didn't have to go subtract numbers. The, the pastor told me, Pastor, as, any, as many people want to come, come. I mean, we got, we're doing the CDC guidelines. If it goes, you know, overflow, we'll do what we need to do. But he said, the pastor at that church, which is a new pastor, said, the venue is hers. No limits. Take the limits off of God. She might not have vocally said that, but she put that down years ago in her last will and testament. I want to, be, I want to have visitations at Kevin's, and I want to be at my church. I want to go in twos. I want to be at this funeral, and I want to be at my church. She got what she wanted. Why? She served Jesus. Now, Jesus don't, didn't bring COVID. Jesus brought, he is life. He destroyed principalities and powers. But you know what? It's voice activated. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let him keep you out of church. You are the church. So focus on Jesus. She got that want list. We checked them all off. She got to ride in the hearse that took Elvis either from the hospital from either from his house or to the hospital, there was two hearses that carried his body. And mom had made a request jokingly to Mike because Mike Cook owned that hearse. And we've got the Memphis tags. And she said, Mike, you know, if, if, if Jesus don't come back in the rapture, I paid, I, I paid my, my, I'm paid up, Mike. I want that hearse. So I was reminded to ask Mike. And he said, yes, it's available. And yes, she can have it. So mom, rode, I rode with her. I didn't sing the song. I thought I would maybe sing a song, maybe an Elvis melody. But you know what I did, Jim? Is we went down South Broad Street. We didn't go down Main Street. Mama didn't have to have the Main Street. She had the main man. She had Jesus. If you got Jesus, Main Street's just a street. <laughs> Amen. She's walking streets of gold. Hallelujah. Dancing with Jesus. <laughs> but I took her down. We're going down South Broad Street. Mike Cook Jr. is the driver. That's, that's Mike's son. He's going to carry on the business. And I thought I might sing, but I just told a few stories about Mama to Mike. Pass on the story. 
But I said, Mom, we're coming up to the deluxe, corner of the deluxe. There's the Mooresville Deluxe ice cream. We're passing this marker. Mama knows this, but I need to, I need to tell my story to Mike Jr. Mom, we're coming to Whataburger, number 11, passing Whataburger. Just little landmarks. Mama's not walking. She's not riding this ride alone. Mom, we're almost at the chapel. We're almost at the church. Parking lot's pretty full, Mom. It's almost time to go home as far as it's time for us to put those things down. See, Mom's not going to, she's not going to go travel this road alone. She loved her family. She loved Jesus, and she got her want list taken care of. She wanted all her, she wanted all of her siblings, she wanted all of her family that wanted to be there, be there, and we were there. God worked it out. He's an awesome God. Amen? And then, I, I guess I just need to go ahead and share this. When we came out, and it was a wonderful service, God sent us Wayne, Bo, my cousin came in from South Carolina and, and hit those special selections that mom had. And I was sharing with Wayne this morning. You know, I'd already, uh, I had a, a buddy of mine, and mama knew David Shoemake. He's one of her best friends she worked with at McGuire. They had a quartet. They sang uh, Bluegrass Gospel. And I'd already thought, well, if I can get uh, uh, Jamie, I was going to check with Jamie when this time got closer to see if he could maybe play the guitar. He wrote songs for the family. He played the guitar and he played the banjo. And I just loved to hear that music. And, uh, but probably three or four years ago, tragically, Jamie got a brain tumor and didn't make it through. And he's in, she's listening to him live now. I was going to plan on maybe see if Jamie would play at Mom's homecoming, but God sent me Wayne. <laughs> he sent me Wayne. And I don't know, Jamie probably couldn't play the piano. I, he, I don't think he could play. He was the banjo and the guitar. But Wayne played that piano and both sang, and it was beautiful. Mom's getting her want list. She's getting that thing done. God will go, he'll, he'll move mountains out of your way to get what you want if you make him your first priority. And I know every prayer that Mama prayed down here that's not came to pass yet, God is watching his word. Just like that rain came down from heaven today. It says, the Bible says, as the rain comes down from heaven and the snow and waters the earth, covers the earth, and it, 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 it causes the earth to bring forth and bud, God says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of his mouth. It shall go and it shall accomplish thereto where I sent it. Jesus, God sent Jesus to this earth to redeem mankind back to himself. And that was purchased 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross by the blood of Jesus. That blood is still alive. That blood, that life speaks out today. It speaks loud. Mom loved God. She loved Jesus. And she loved family. Can you say that today? I'm looking at this church. I know a lot of people here, and I'm, I'm speaking live, Facebook live to the world. Can you say that about Jesus? Is your destination heaven? If you, walk, if, you, if you breathed your breath, your last today, is your destination heaven? Is heaven your final destination? There's only one way. I could hear Billy Graham echo that throughout his journey down here on this world. There's only one way. There's only one Savior. His name is Jesus. And He came. And he's coming again. Whether we go by the rapture or we go by the grave, we're going, if you know Jesus. We are on our way. There's only one way and one door to the Father. That door is Jesus. That door is Jesus. Because Wayne comes up, we're going to close out here with whatever melody is in his heart. God just keeps adding to my life story. Because as I look back, that little boy that was scared walking home, I can look back now knowing hindsight's twenty twenty, the calling God had on my life. Now with Jesus in my life, everything I do would be to bring honor and glory to Him. If you're in darkness, all you got to do is come out to the light. That's what he's told me to do, to help reach people. Snatch them out of darkness into the kingdom of their dear son, Jesus. 
That's what he's called me to do, to tell people how good Jesus is. The devil's been defeated. Darkness has been defeated. But you've got to make that choice. You've got to make that choice. We were confident, Mom. She'd made that choice. And she checked off that want list that day when she, Jesus, God received her breath. Everything was accomplished. She fought the fight. She ran the race. She finished her course with joy. All the struggles, all the pain, all the sufferings are in the past. And I know she's watching. She's watching this service today with her friends, with her family, with her mom, with her dad, with my nephew Chris. They're all watching and waiting. They don't know who's going to make that destiny. That's between God and you. But Jesus has already paid. He's already purchased the tickets. He's already paid for the price. The work has already been done. So my greatest desire for anybody hearing this message today, and it felt so good to come home, to come to church today, because that's where we get our strength from. It's when, we, when we're hurting, when we're when we don't know what to do, this is where we get strength. We get vision. We get focus. To know We don't have to know it all. We just have to know Him who does know it all. And when we come together, the pieces of our puzzles, Terry, they'll fit right in place. God gives you that grace. He's given you the grace and the anointing to be able to speak in even the darkest, hardest times and speak life. Speak life. Just give somebody hope. Do you know Jesus? It's not hard. I'll, I'll tell this one, one story. When, when, we, when, I, we brought moms, when we brought mother into the church because she lied in state, she had one dear friend that went on all their vacations they went to, traveled every state in the United States of America plus Alaska and Canada. I don't think she went to Canada. I don't know, Mom. I can't remember. Everywhere in the United States, Hawaii, she didn't make Hawaii. But Larry Keesler was sitting, he was sitting in that church waiting. Nobody else in that pew, just sit for the people helping out. And I went over there, because why? Larry wouldn't sit there alone. Mama would not let her friend be alone in that place. And I walked over there to Larry Keesler and I said, Larry, I appreciate you being here. Mom, I appreciate you being here before anybody. And I said, Larry, before, I want to let you know this. I said, Mama got me a couple times, and she said, Robert, I want you to pray for Larry. Larry's son's going through some hard things. I said, I will, Mama. We'll pray. Let's pray right now. Why wait? But she also said, Robert, I want you to pray for Larry because he's asked for you. If he can call you and talk to you, he's got some things, questions he needs to ask. And I said, yeah, Mama, give him my number. Tim, call me anytime. I told that to Larry. I said, Larry, we're praying for you. I'm praying for you. Anything you need to know doesn't matter. He stood up and he asked me a question. He said, I need to ask you right now. I said, okay, Larry. Yeah, that's fine. Not a better place. Mom was right here. Already her want list, her prayer list. Being, He wants to know about heaven and about Jesus. And, but he's, make, Jim, he's making it all complicated. He's making it too hard. He's asking the questions you don't need to ask. And I took him back to the gospel. When I started in the appliance business, the first guy that trained me Took me in. He's been doing this for 20, 30 years. This is my first day on the job. And he took me in. And after this lady told me all the problems she was having with this washing machine, and then she left the room, and I'm ready. To, okay, this thing's broke. I got to get my hands. I got to figure out how to fix this thing. Wesley Clare stepped back. said, step back. Robert, step back. He said, now I want you to kiss that washing machine. I said, kiss it? I'm, I think I signed up for the wrong job. No, he said, no, wait a minute. He said, you need to kiss that thing because I'm ready to fix something that ain't broke. He said, you need to keep it simple, stupid. Step back, evaluate the situation, listen to it, listen to mama. She knows that machine. But don't think just because somebody told you something, it ain't, something's broke. So I told Larry, I said, Larry, don't focus on all these questions. Do you know Jesus? Have you said yes to Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe God? And I didn't get this loud in church. I'm just talking to Larry. Do you believe that Jesus is God's only Son, that God raised Him from the dead, and He died and bled for you? 
He said, yeah, I believe that. That's it. Keep it simple. I told him that testimony. But then I said, Larry, call me anytime. See, guys, don't make the gospel hard for people. Do you believe, Jesus said, how can we do the works? Do you believe? Believe on Him who sent. Believe on God. John 14 said, if, if, just believe on Jesus. If you've seen me, you've seen my Father, Jesus said. If you're hearing me today, you're hearing the voice of my mother and Jesus. Just say yes to Jesus. That's Romans 10, 9 and 10. That's the Romans road. If you believe in your heart and if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Saved from hell and destination heaven. And then guess what, guys? Your stay down here can be blessed. You can Down here. You can have your cake and eat it too if you come to Jesus. Amen? Because the blessing of the Lord, my Bible teaches me, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And my God don't add no sorrow in my tomorrow. Because he's alive in my now. Amen. So that's what I that's the hope I would give you today. And I just ask you to bow your head. I'm gonna speak a prayer, and you don't have to raise your hand just like mom's pastor gave the invitation at her homecoming. You know me, you know where you can find me, but if you don't know Jesus, he's right here. And you don't have to wait to enter heaven's gates. You can say today is the day of salvation. Jesus is here. All that he asks that you believe. Quit trying to earn the gift that he gave you. Quit, quit trying to figure out this cursed life down here. Just focus on the blessing. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Keep it that simple. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. Believe that he was God's, he is God's son. That he lived, he died a perfect life. And if you don't know that, if you don't know Jesus, that's what you got to do today is just call on him. You got to you got to believe in your heart, not with your head. You believe in your heart. You hear God speaking to you. I don't know if I'm going to if you don't know if your destination is heaven, you need to call on Jesus right now. Because if you don't know, he wants you to know. And you need to know because you have to make that choice while you're alive down here on this earth. So, Father, I would just pray right now, if there's anybody here in this church or listening to me, if they don't know Jesus and if they're calling out to you right now, you have the guarantee of the Holy Spirit. When you call on His name, He will save you from your sin, the sin of rejecting Him and coming to Him. And all you got to do is put your whole heart in His hand. Come to Him and He will change your life. The Bible says once you do that, you call on the name of the Lord, you will be changed. I said you will be changed. So, Father, I just thank you, those calling upon your name that are saying yes to Jesus today, Lord. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for making them a new creation, totally created new in you, and that, Lord, they would get into a good church where the Word of God is being preached and taught. And we thank you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. That's what we've got to do. That's what we're called to do is go out and be lights in dark places. So I told, I told uh, Sherry, I think, uh, I think this Bible has fulfilled its purpose. I know it's fulfilled its purpose in mom's life, but I think it's going to my office. I was able to uh, uh, officiate Miss Vivian's service, and uh, I asked for her personal Bible just to look through some things and Miss Vivian, outdone mom, she had one of these big Bibles. That thing weighed about 15, 20 pounds. And I carried, she was a small, petite lady, but they told me she had a pretty big pocketbook, so I figured Miss Vivian, she was well balanced going to church. She, had a, she balanced herself out. But uh, when I left, I left that pulpit, I took that Bible and I placed it in, in her daughter's hands because it fulfilled its purpose. See, this is, this is what life is all about. This is the purpose God loves you keep it simple and he wants you to come home when when he calls when he closes everything down he wants all of his children home in heaven and we're coming back to this earth for a thousand years to rule and reign oh happy day 
So just make sure you've made your destination heaven. That's what mom would want, and that's what she gave birth to me to do, to, to preach God's good word. I didn't know it as a child. You don't have to know everything that's in this word. Don't think you've got to read it from, from cover to cover, but you've got to let it read you. And when something jumps out, that's God speaking to you personally. Stop, pause, be still, and just let God be God. Take time in life. Don't rush through life. Memories. Jim sent me a special song that I was, I felt like I wanted to try to work it into to something, but I couldn't just find the right person to sing it. And on his phone, he sent me one when I called him and gave him just a little story, that precious memories. Precious memories, how they linger. And, you know, God will do special things. He, he's worked with me in twos. God's got little things to give you. and do. He'll show you how awesome He is. See, he did, your life, He gave it to you. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. He doesn't determine your days, but He knows your days. He knew where I would be when I would need to see that special thing. He knew it was coming, but He wouldn't show me all. He's not going to show you all this, this hurt and grief that, that's going to happen every day. Why? You don't need to know that. You need, you need to be living. Be prepared. Be ready in season, out of season to step into glory. And that's what His Word will do. It will prepare you for the storms so you'll walk through. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you for this service. I thank you, Lord, for giving, giving me some closure here, Father. Just, it doesn't have to be many words that we share. It's just got to, got to be your word. Because your word brings life. Your, your word brings health. It's a medicine, Lord. A merry heart does good like a medicine, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for merry hearts. That we can laugh. We can laugh together and we can cry together. But, Lord, the main thing is we stay together. I thank you, Lord, for this church. I thank you, Lord, for, for bringing in the gifts in this church. Bringing the pieces of the puzzle into this church, Lord. To see Darius come up here and sing. And he didn't have to sing along today, Lord. There was a, he brought Wayne to help him. He brought the music to the song. Thank you, Jesus, for putting this story together. And I just speak life and blessings over your people. In Jesus' name. If you need personal prayer this morning, I tell you what, let's stand. Let's just stand. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you what, Mama might say, Mama got y'all out early today. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, I guess she just done something. She just slowed that old clock down. But I felt like I've shared. I've, I've... Yes, Terry. Thank you for joining us today at Word of Faith Worship Center. I pray God's grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then according to Romans 10, 8 through 10, the word is nigh to thee in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord and believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. We would ask you today to simply say, yes, I believe this, and I say yes to Jesus. Now, if you just received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we would encourage you to get into a good church. Our church is located at 757 Harris Street, Northwest, Concord, North Carolina, 28025. And you can also find us on the Internet at wordoffaithworshipcenter.org or wofwc.org. We hope to see you soon. Blessings.